Shalom. I want to give all praises, glory, and honor to Yahweh, Bashum, Yahusha, Bashum, Rakakadash. Double honors to the apostles and elders at Great Millstone. Much respect to you, brothers out there, as preaching this word in truth and sincerity throughout the four corners of the earth. Standing tall, standing boldly for the name of Yahweh, Bashum, Yahusha. Shalom to the elect scattered abroad. And the speckled bird wants to say shalom. All right, let's, let's get into it. So as you see here, the title reads, uh, Charlemagne urges black people to buy guns in the wake of Amon Aubrey. All right. So thing that stands out with me, you know, um, you know, me personally, because us in this truth, we understand that we're not black. All right. Black is a social construct. All right. We're different shades of brown. There's no such thing as black people. We're just different shades of brown. And there's no such thing as white people. All right. The self-proclaimed white man. All right. He calls himself white. Which he's not white. Okay. He's he's different shades of uh, uh, red. All right. The blood shows forth through his skin. Okay. If you really want to be clear, we're actually the real white people, white meaning pure, okay? Which the elect, the ones that are trying to please Yahweh Bashem in the nation of Israel, the so-called Negroes, Latinos, Native Americans, and speckled bird, the speckled bird being our people scattered abroad, they look like the other nations, but the spirit bears witness with our spirit that we are the children power, Okay? So those are the true Israelites, the true white people, okay? If you can receive that, you know, a lot of our people has been brainwashed to call themselves black, <laughs> all right? We're not black, we're different shades of brown. But uh, anyways, get on track, you know, me, when I first uh, uh, saw this, I'm like, you know, through the spirit, I'm like, our people's waking up and seeing the devil for who he is. You know, even if they're not in the truth, a lot of our people is waking up and seeing the devil for who he is. And this may, you know, having this brother being killed, this may spark up a race war. OK. And uh, what your pastors don't tell you that race wars are prophesied in the bible okay people are going to stand up one against another and they're going to be killing each other as biblical okay one nation against another nation all right so that's biblical and that's going to happen but you know um in his defense you know as we read the uh, article lord willing if i end up doing that you know pretty much to sum it up um you know, he's not saying to get guns just to be getting them. He's saying uh, get the guns to uh, protect yourself just in case something happens. But we know Jake here, you know, a lot of times, you know, uh, uh, and he get wild up. And Jake might end up uh, uh, getting too wild up and just go uh, uh, busting at people, man. You know, that may happen. That may very well happen. You know, because uh, this man Esau Edom, the so-called white man, he's coming down with great wrath. And with that great wrath, him being backed up into the corner, knowing that he has but a short time to rule this earth. Okay. He's coming down with great wrath and he's coming down with guns. He's going to be busting at people. All right. Shooting shots. This man don't care. But this is why we're making the videos, really. You know, this is why I'm making this video to warn our people. You know, your guns are not going to save you. But having the covering of Yahweh by Shemel Sai, Yahweh being the father, Yahweh Shah being the son, okay, having the covering of Yahweh by Shemel Sai is going to get you out of trouble. But Jake, you know, he, he can't wait upon the Lord. He wants it now. And us in this truth, we realize, you know, 
he that endures to the end, the same shall be saved. You know, Matthew 24, 13, uh, roughly paraphrasing. Okay, you got to endure to the end so you can be saved from this enemy, from this devil. This is man is looking to take, take your life from you. Okay. And also, uh, also remember, this man has been given the blessing of the sword. What is the modern day sword? The gun. And so are people going to think, you know, are people in a, a carnal level are going to think that they're going to be able to um, beat this man at his own game, at his own blessing? You cannot beat this man at his own blessing. The Lord clearly blessed him with that gun, with the sword. And ultimately, those who try to uh, uh, buck up against the system, they're going to be ultimately destroyed. Or the Lord may save them for the nuclear missiles, the intercontinental ballistic missiles that are coming to Babylon the Great, which is America. Okay. But anyways, I want to give a few scriptures. I was going to go ahead and read this, but I'm kind of crunched for time right now. But anyways, you can go look it up yourself. He's not saying uh, get guns just to be getting them and, and go out there and, and, and kill everybody and fight, but um, just have them for your safety, okay? And I'm telling you, there's nothing wrong with having a gun for your safety. But, okay, if you don't have the covering of Yahweh side, you threw Okay, you're absolutely through. All right, if you're not doing that which is pleasing unto the Lord, you're through. Just plain and simple. Okay, your sword is not going to save you. Your your weapons, your guns, are not going to save you. Okay. When Jacob's trouble pops off, and, and you didn't do that which was pleasing to the Lord, hey, that's that's adios to you, man. OK. And once again, there's nothing wrong with having protection, but the ultimate protection is having you out by some outside. You know, this man Esau Edom, he has all the guns, man. He has all the ammo. You know, you picking up a gun and thinking that you're going to uh, uh, fight, thinking that you're going to win. This man's going to mow you down. OK, he has all the weapons. OK. So I'm going to go ahead and get some scriptures. So this is Psalms 34 and 7. The angel of the Lord encampeth round about them that fear him and deliver them. Okay. When you fear the Lord, when you keep his commandments, when you do that, which is pleasing unto him. That's when you're going to be protected. Okay. I, I like to get verse six after this. Um, this poor man cried and the Lord, Yahweh Shemasai, heard him and saved him out of all his troubles. You see. Because the name of the Lord is a strong tower, all right? And we just got to wait patiently upon the Lord. But you have these jakes out here that can't wait patiently for the Lord. And so they're going to be confounded. They're going to be destroyed for not waiting upon the Lord, okay? Let's get this note right here. It's Proverbs 16 to 7. When a man's ways please the Lord, Yahweh by Sai, he maketh even his enemies to be at peace with him. Okay, when you please the Lord, all right, when those angels are covering you, guiding you to the right direction, even your enemies are going to be at peace with you. So, you know, that's why we go out there to the highways and byways with, with great boldness and preach this word because we understand, hey, the Lord, you know, got our back because we're doing the work. All right, we're doing the work of the Lord giving our bodies as a living sacrifice, which is our reasonable service to the Lord. So even our enemies are going to respect us. Even our enemies are, are not going to take us down unless the Lord allows it, okay? Unless the Lord allows it. Because we understand the man's goings is of the Lord. And, and when you go up to the spiritual realm, all right, you just have peace anyways. And, and the dead that's in this truth are going to be the first ones to be risen up. But everybody else, 
Okay, everybody else, they're going to be <laughs> trusting in this man Esau Edom system or trusting in themselves, and they're going to be confounded. Okay. Let's get some more scriptures. Um, let's see it. what else I want to get. Um, let's go get Psalms 18 and 2. Okay. Slide here. Trying to turn it. What? Heck, stupid on me. All right, so this is Psalms 18 and 2. The Lord, Yahweh, by Shemashai, is my rock, my fortress, my deliverer, my power, my strength, in whom I trust, my buckler, and the horn of my salvation, and my high tower. Okay? But everybody else, the two thirds, they don't trust in the Lord. Okay? I will call upon the Lord, Yahweh by Shemashai, who is worthy to be praised. So shall I be saved from my enemies. Okay? When you call upon the Lord, you're going to be saved from your enemies. Psalms 18, I mean, it's Proverbs 18, 10. It says, why? The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous runneth into it. In the gym, when you're in trouble, you're gonna call upon the name of the Lord, and He's gonna take care of you. And you got only, and, and, and you know, the elect can see this, and they're gonna do that in the time of trouble. But everybody else, they're gonna trust in their sword and their guns. Okay, let's get uh, Psalms 44 and 6. For I will not trust in my bow, neither shall my sword save me. Okay? Your sword is not going to save you in the time of trouble. You know? It, it's not. I'm sorry, man. All right? If, if you think you're going to go out there and win against this man Esau Edom, you have another thing coming. We're supposed to humble ourselves. All right, and wait for the Lord to come, okay? And not be like uh, uh, these wild-ass jakes out here that that's going to think that the sword is going to save them. No, okay? I said, I'm only saying this as a standpoint because this is what I thought of when I first saw the um, saw the article, okay? Cause I'm like some some people, some of our people would take it the wrong way, and, and you know, which is prophesied anyways. Cause this man Esau Edom is coming down with great wrath, you know. They're going to think that their guns is going to save them. Okay, they're going to have a carnal mindset and and not lean on Yahweh Shemal Sah. Okay, let's get back to the scripture. Psalms 44 and 6, I'm going to read it again. For I will not trust in my bow, neither shall my neither shall my sword save me. Okay? Your sword is not going to save you. If you think it's going to save you at the end, no, it's not. But thou hast saved us from our enemies and hast put them to shame that hate us. So ultimately, when the Lord comes and when the Lord sets up that standard, that's when our enemies are going to be in shame. Okay, when the men of the Lord get that spiritual power, when we get lifted up in them chariots, Lord willing, we're of the elect, and we get our uh, um, new uh, uh, bodies, and the Lord comes down with great wrath and anger and put our enemies in chains, that's when our enemies that hate us are going to be put to shame. In power, we boast all the day long and praise thy name forever, Selah, Okay. And best believe, you know, we're doing this now, praising the name of the Lord, praising Yahweh by Shema We're going to uh, do it even more when he saves us. OK, we're doing it now and, and even in the time of trouble. OK. Let's get. um. Let's go hit, get uh, Matthew 24, 6. Because these are the times that we're living in. 
and your pastors are just not uh, uh, bringing out these scriptures, man. You know, I had a person at work tell me, you know, hey, the message for today, everything is going to get better. No, it's not going to get better. You know, you have these places opening it back up, you know, giving Jacob false hope that everything's going to be back to normal. No, this is just the beginning of sorrows as we will read. Matthew 24 and 6, and ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that ye be not troubled for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. For nation shall rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. All right. Nation against nation, kingdom against kingdom. Okay. Edomites and all these other uh, Moabites, Ishmaelites. These are just different nations. Okay. So when this man Esau Edom comes down with great wrath, and when these race wars pop off, those are nations, two different nations against nations, okay? One nation against another nation, it's like it, okay? One nation against another nation, all right? Because when you understand the uh, uh, Bible, all right, the two main characters is really Jacob and Esau, okay? And kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be famines, pestilence, earthquakes, and diverse places. All these are the beginnings of sorrows. So all this is just the beginning, man. All this stuff popping off, this is just the beginning. All right? And that's why the word says in Matthew 24, 13. But he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. Because it's going to get crazy as hell out here. People fighting against each other. People robbing, stealing, breaking into, into each other's houses, man. So you got to have the covering of the Lord on you. This is 1 Corinthians 4 and 11. Actually, I'm going to go ahead and get um, Acts 14 and 22 since I'm current on the time. Acts 14 and 22, uh, confirming the souls of the disciples and exhorting them to continue in the faith and that we that we must through much tribulation okay much tribulation enter into the kingdom of Yahweh by Shema okay it says much tribulation so through that tribulation through you catching hell you're going to call on the name of Yahweh by Shema okay all the way to the end all the way to the end. But uh, these two thirds out here. That lo loathing the law. Yahweh by Shema outside. Despising his word. Despising his commandments. Okay. They're going to be confounded. They're not going to call upon the name of the Lord. In these last days. Okay. They're not. All right. And plus the way of truth. You know. When that happens. It's going to be blocked. The famine of the word. They're going to be searching for the word, word in these last days and not be able to attain it. Okay. Let me get a couple more scriptures. Let's get, um, let's get Zechariah. No, actually, let's get Zephaniah. Yeah, let's, let's get Zechariah first. Okay. Zechariah 9, 13. When I have been judah for me and filled the bowl with ephraim because judah right now the so-called negroes all right our people all right they're they're docile right now they're in the docile condition they're like an old lion and um you know when genesis 49 who who shall rise them up you know they're in such a docile con a condition but in these last days judah's gonna be roused up Okay, they seen the devil for who he really is. And Ephraim, okay, the northern kingdom, our northern kingdom brothers, all right, they they going to come together with us, all right. And to raise up thy sons of Zion against the sons of Greece, all right. Who's the Grecians? Modern day Greece, all right. Those are the Edomites. So-called self-proclaimed white man, okay? And made thee as a sword of a mighty man. So, you know, in these last days, you know, it's going to be Jacob. 
versus Edom. We're going to see a lot of that. And it's going to be Jacob against Jacob too. Edom versus uh, Edom. You know, the Egyptians versus the Egyptians. It's going to be total confusion, total chaos out here, man. And we're telling you beforehand before it happens, okay? Let's, uh, let's keep on reading. And the Lord shall be seen over them and his arrows shall go forth as lightnings lightnings and the Lord power shall blow the trumpet and shall go with the whirlwind of the south okay and the Lord of hosts shall defend them so this is going into when the men of the Lord alright wait upon the Lord and, and they get that spiritual power this is going into that all right. And the Lord host shall defend them and shall devour and subdue the sling stones and they shall drink and make noises through the wine and they shall be filled like bowls. Ooh, listen to that. And as the corners of the altar. OK, listen to that, man. All right. When the men of the Lord, they just going when they get their spiritual power, they're going to be out there devouring, you know. Because this man Esau Edom, he's coming down with great wrath. Okay, Revelation 12 and 12. He's coming down with great wrath. So the Lord has to set up a standard against this man Esau Edom. And that's going to happen. And when the enemies of the Lord come in like a flood, you know, in Isaiah 59, 19, I believe. Okay. That standard is going to be lifted up. And, and since you uh, uh, want to come at us with that blood, you know, come at us trying to take our lives, you know, that standard is going to be lifted up. And the Lord of hosts shall defend them and they shall. OK, I already read that. Verse 16. And the Lord, Yahweh, their power shall save them that are in the day as the flock of his people, for they shall be as the stones of the crown and lift up the ensign upon the land. Okay, so we can't wait to be saved from my enemies because this man Esau Edom, he has a perpetual hatred. Matter of fact, I should have brought that out. Um, where he has Ezekiel 35. I'm just go ahead and get to the point. Okay, Ezekiel 35 and 5. Because thou hast had a perpetual hatred and has shed the blood of the children of Israel. By the force of the sword in the time of their calamity, in the time that their iniquity had an end. Okay, this man Esau Edom, he has but a perpetual hatred. You know, our people so docile that, you know, they try to be all best friends and buddy buddy with these Edomites out here. But this man Esau Edom, hey, he hates you. He hates you. He sees you moving into his neighborhoods, he sees you uh, moving into his uh, uh, nice apartments. And he's just looking down at you. He's just hating you, man. He's waiting for blood to be upon you. Verse 15. As thou didst rejoice in the inheritance of the house of Israel, because it was desolate, so will I do unto thee. Thou shalt be desolate on Mount Seir and all Idumia, even all of it, and they shall know that I am Yahweh by So at the end of the day, you know, we got next, you know. We're going to win. But I'm telling you right now, this is very imperative that you wake up to the truth, repent, and come into the uh, knowledge that you're an Israelite. If not, the Lord cannot cover you. So let's get um Isaiah 55 and 6. Seek ye the Lord while he may be found and call ye upon him while he is near. Okay, instead of picking up a gun, Seek the Lord while he may be found so he can pardon your sins. Okay? Seek the Lord while he may be found and wait upon the Lord. Don't lose faith. Don't lose patience, you know? P roughly paraphrasing, you know, the word says, uh, woe to them who uh, lost patience. Okay? Woe meaning destruction. Let's get um, Zephaniah 3 and 8. Okay? Therefore, wait ye upon me, saith the Lord, Yahweh, until the day that I rise up for the prey. Wait upon the Lord. Don't be getting up, gearing up, 
trying to fight this man Esau Edom. That's a losing battle, man. That's a losing battle. You trying to gear up and try to fight this man. This man going to take you down, man. All right. If the spirit of the Lord ain't on you, the, <laughs> this man is going to take you down. Okay. Us that's in the truth, we understand, you know, we're just nothing but sheep. And we got to wait upon the Lord. You know, this is going to be so crazy out here. Brothers are going to have to be living in the wilderness, you know. Trying to uh, dodge this man Esau Edom. So I'm going to read again, Zephaniah 3 and 8. Therefore, wait ye upon me, saith the Lord, until the day that I rise up for the prey. For my determination is to gather the nations that I may assemble the kingdoms and pour upon them my indignation. So the Lord is coming up to destroy these nations. The Lord has to uh, give you that green light. All right, raise up that standard so you can take out the enemy. All right, not you coming up in, in your own mind thinking you're going to rise up and win against this devil. You're not. Even all my fierce anger for all the earth shall be devoured with fire of my jealousy. So we're waiting upon the Lord. Okay, we're not gearing up. All right, we're just nothing but sheep. The word says, be wise as serpents and harmless as doves. Okay. So with that, we're not gearing up to fight the enemy. All right. We're waiting upon the Lord for that. Okay. The Lord is going to take care of us. So, um, you know, with that, you know, the elect is going to understand to wait upon the Lord. Everybody else, you know, two thirds of our people, they're going to be confounded and be destroyed. For trying to rise up against this man Esau Edom. Okay. Without the Lord giving you that green light. And, and plus this man. He's he's been given the blessing of the sword. Matter of fact. Let me get that. And um, I'm going to close out. It's uh, Revelation 6 and 4. And there went out another horse that was red. And power was given unto him that sat thereon. To take peace from the earth. It's a clearly describing Esau Edom. And that they should kill one another. And there was given unto him a great sword. Okay. A great sword. The guns. The ballistic missiles. Weapons. Okay. And our people. You know the ones that. Uh, uh, with that carnal mind. Thinking they can rise up against this man. You're not going to. That's, that's a losing battle man. So wait upon the Lord. Alright. Wait upon the Lord. Don't be out here trying to gear up, trying to fight this man. It's not going to happen. But with that, I want to give all praises going on to you. How about Shem al Shah, by Shem Rakakadash, the ones, so apostles and elders of great most all must respect to you, brothers out there. Just preaching this word in truth and sincerity. Until next time, Lord willing, Shalom.